How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. By the way, if you see back there, I got my little vintage light. I'm an official YouTuber now. Every YouTuber who has these little vintage lights, you know, they end up blowing up in views. But anyway, I want to talk a little bit of how you can read command line arguments in Node.js. So if you're kind of new at coding and you're new to programming, and you want to build a command line program, one of the most important things you need to understand is how do you actually allow users to pass in some information into your program so you can do stuff dynamically. For an example, let's say you have a script that needs to take in a path to a file and that script's gonna read that file and maybe do some logic on that file, right? So you need to figure out how can you read in command line arguments in your Node.js application. So I'm gonna show you some code and kind of walk you through how you can potentially do that. But before I dive into the topic, be sure to give me a like because it helps my channel grow. And also be sure to click that subscribe and bell icon if you wanna get more videos like this in the future that should hopefully help you become a better web developer or a backend Node.js developer. So I have a little program here where basically you can run it and pass in a character, right? And what it's gonna do is this program reads in a file. Right now this is kind of like hard coded but it reads in a file and you can count how many letters exist of that character in that file. So for an example, if I were to pass in A, it's gonna loop through this file and figure out how many A's exist. So let's just go ahead and show you how that works. Go ahead and say node index.js, and then I'm gonna pass in a third argument, which is called a command line argument of A, and run this and notice that it prints out, we found three A's in the file. So kind of loop through here and found A, I found an A and I found another A. So a super, super basic program, but if you are a beginner, what I recommend doing is stop this video, try to implement this program yourself, and then unpause this video. I think this is a really good application to kind of test your waters with Node.js, especially if you're like a brand new beginner. But let's just go ahead and look at the code and kind of figure out how can you actually parse that a that I passed into the command line. So if you look at this application, I kind of have it split up in a couple of files. I have a index.js, which is the main file. And then I have two other files called count characters and load file. So load file basically has a hard coded path to this file.txt and it just loads it in. If we look at it here, you can see that it just basically calls um, fs read file sync from this path and returns the file content. So pretty straightforward. If you're new to node, this is how you can load in a file. This is an fs, which is shorthand for file system. And it has a lot of methods in it that you can do to read in files. Now notice I wouldn't use the sync suffix command if you're doing production ready applications because the sync command will block up your entire node server. Just keep that in mind, but this is a beginner's tutorial so you can use sync if you want to. And then the second function, this might be a little bit more advanced if you need the, the JavaScript, but this function takes in a character, for example, that A that we typed in over here in the command line, and it also takes in a string. So this string is the actual string that you wanna loop through and figure out how many A's you found. I'm kinda doing like a little, a tricky hack here where I basically split the string up by the character subtract one from the length to get the actual number of characters that um, show up. But that's kind of beyond the point of this video. So let's just go ahead and look at the index file because the main point of this video is to show you how to read in command line arguments, right? Let's just get to the point. I've been kind of wasting too much time. If you look here, there is this global called process in Node.js and it has an object called argv. It turns out this argv actually has a bunch of elements in it. It's an array that has a bunch of elements that happens to grow as you put in more command line arguments. So let me just show you what I mean here. If I do a console log and say process.e.argv, you will see that if I were to run this same program and pass it multiple characters like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you'll see that it prints out um, undefined because I put process.env because I'm a nub. But let's just go ahead and rerun that again and you'll notice that it prints out an array of a bunch of different things. So let's just kind of inspect this and see what's going on. So you see here we have an array. The zeroth index of the array is node, right? That's the actual command that we ran in the command line. If you go back and notice that we ran node here, that should make sense. The second index or the, the first index, remember an array is indexed from zero, one, two, three, four, five. The first index in that array or index one is going to be the second argument that you pass in, which happens to be index.js. So this is the name of the actual script that you're running. And typically you don't care about these things when you're running a node script, you care about index two and on. So what I'm doing here in this code is I'm saying, give me index two, which happens to be the A that we passed in right here. Um, so if you look at this, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And now we have access to all these characters. So if we wanted to alter this program and do more with the command line arguments, for example, let's say instead of the path being hard coded in that file I showed you, it's like, like this. Let's say I wanted to bring that in a command line argument. So I could say const file is equal to process.argv. And then I could say that's the 
index three of the command line arguments. So now I could run this application and I could say the first argument is A and the second argument is file.txt. And the same exact code should work the way it did before. But now we're making this program more dynamic. It's more modular. We can pass in paths. We can kind of run this program over any file that we want instead of that being hard coded down here like we saw before, which it still is hard coded. So that's my bad. I just need to go like this and uh, run this again and hopefully that works. Okay, so same logic. I just kind of forgot to refactor that. But that is how you can grab command line arguments and some, and a little tip and trick that a lot of people like to do is you can actually do an array destructuring. So if you wanted to kind of clean this up a little bit, I could do brackets here like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually do dot splice of two. So what this does is it basically deletes the first two elements of this array. So index zero and index one will be swiped off. And now we just have everything from index two and on. And if we do array destructuring, we're basically taking out the first index of that array and we're taking out the second index of the array. So let me just go ahead and print this out in case you were completely lost at this point. Let's just go ahead and print out what this actually gives us. And I'm just gonna exit out early so that we don't like have a bunch of other things print out in our console log, but this is something good to kind of understand and inspect. Notice that when you splice from index two, you're getting only the elements from index two and beyond. So that's a really good tip and trick to understand when you're becoming a JavaScript or Node developer. The splice command, there's also like a slice command, but, but this is typically how you do it. If you wanted to get multiple command line arguments, and this is a little trick that you can kind of clean up your code to just grab the actual variables that you want, right? So this is gonna declare a care variable and a file variable and we can kind of use those later on in our code. So yeah, that's all I really want to show you. I hope this kind of helped you understand how to read in command line arguments. There's probably some other things I could have talked about or I might have left off. And if you can think of anything, be sure to leave a comment below so we can all kind of discuss it and learn along the way to become a better Node.js developer or a JavaScript developer. Also, remember to press that like button if you want to see my channel grow because it really helps me out. And also be sure to click that subscribe and bell icon if you want to get more videos like this in the future that should hopefully help you become a better web developer or a Node.js developer. All right, have a good day and happy coding.